it says it says it's going <laughs> so what? yes we are. we are live on facebook <laughs> so this is good <laughs> all right hello here we go. welcome to episode of testimony tuesdays today i have a very special guest with me this is jessica decker thank you hello. for joining me and absolutely. she's going to be sharing i'm sorry yeah, absolutely She's going to be sharing her story of inner healing and deliverance. So, Jess, I will give it to you, and you can just tell the people um, just whatever you like as far as how we came to know each other. Um, just introduction to get started. Sure. Um, so, uh, my name is Jessica. I uh, met Danielle at Living Water Church in Bolingbrook. Um, I came to know her. I had seen her, um, certainly kind of, uh, knew who you were, Danielle, but it wasn't until the infamous tambourine uh, situation <laughs> that I came to know you. Um, cause I, I learned that you were another person that was just using your passion and, uh, being led by the spirit to, play a tambourine or you dance and you do your flag. So um, we are definitely sisters in that. Um, but that's how I came to know you. I also teach um, the 9 a.m. service there at church. And I had both of your kiddos in class. Mm -hmm. And then obviously your wonderful husband is um, part of the worship team. So that's how I kind of came to know you. Wonderful. And I'm glad we met. <laughs> yes, so, um, amen. I wanted to ask you um, if you can just tell us just a little bit about your story as far as inner healing and deliverance. Um, you can share like, but if we can first just start off with how you were first made aware of um, your need for inner healing. Or deliverance? Sure. Good question. Um, so I think that I think I'll start here where I realized that my spirit was willing, right? And that I, I wanted to do these, you know, I wanted to live a different way. I wanted to really surrender um, everything to Jesus. And, um, I realized after watching a movie, actually a documentary, um, called out in the name of Jesus, I actually realized, um, so much. Um, I think I, I wasn't really like aware or, or certain what deliverance was. I, I didn't grow up in like a Pentecostal church. Um, I grew up as a Baptist. So I really like, it, it just came, the movie came along at a perfect time where I really like was internally kind of feeling like I wanted to do more. It was just, there were parts mm -hmm. of my life that were bound up that mm -hmm. were kind of off limits in terms of, even if I felt willing, um, yeah. in my spirit, uh, that I was really kind of bound in my flesh. Um, and I think that movie really helped me not only just see the culture, right. Of, um, deliverance mm -hmm. ministry and, um, the situations where deliverance is kind of like the the thing you need to step forward into those those bigger if i can say bigger areas or those those more like how do you how do i want to say it more uh um, deeper distance, more deeper, um, deeper. yes just that truth right um yeah so I, I think that movie helped me. And I think just that feeling of, of uh, I was willing and I knew what I wanted to do in my spirit. It was just, I was really bound up in some places. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to read, um, cause I just jumped in right away and asked you that question, but I kind of uh, forgot how I wanted to read from the scripture. I'm um, just leading into that. 
And so I'm going to read it really quick. Um, it's in Mark chapter 9, verse 17 through 18. And if you're just tuning in, I just asked Jessica, how was she first made aware that she um, was in need of some sort of healing or deliverance? And so in this passage of scripture, we read how this father, he had brought his son to Jesus for help. And is that a spirit that makes him mute so this boy couldn't talk? And it says, and whatever, whenever it seizes him, it would throw him down and he would foam at the mouth and grind his teeth and he would become rigid. That sounds really similar to something that we see today. Um, we see that with epilepsy. We see that with seizures. We see that yep. with um, different, different um, manifestations like that. But a lot of the time it's labeled as a health condition. And I just thought that was interesting because here this boy is having similar um, symptoms, similar um, manifestations. Mm -hmm. And the father mm -hmm. right away recognizes that it's Jesus who can possibly heal him. So it says in verse 20, through 27, it talks about how they brought the boy to him, to Jesus. And when the spirit saw him, um, saw Jesus, it immediately convulsed the boy and he fell on the ground. He rolled around. He was foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, you know, how long has he has he been this way? And the father said from childhood and it often would throw him down into the fire and into the water and it would try to destroy him. So it was like trying to um, take the boy's life. And it was almost like suicidal types of things because a regular person wouldn't try to drown themselves or throw themselves right. in fire. And so he recognized that something had to be going on. This isn't normal. Um, something is causing this. And so he said to Jesus, if you can, all things, um, he said to Jesus, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, and I love Jesus's response. He says, if, if he's, cause he's like, if I can, if you can, all things are possible for the one who believes. And immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And I even think that's interesting because right away we see he's he's got a little bit of he knows that Jesus something is telling him that Jesus is the one who could help his son. And yet he's still struggling a little bit. He's a little conflicted because he believes, but he doesn't know if he believes all the way. He still has some unbelief, some doubt there. And. Then we read that Jesus saw the crowd running, you know, and now a crowd is coming. And so he's like, okay, things are getting a little rowdy here. And he rebukes the, the unclean spirit and he tells it. He says, you mute and deaf spirit, I command you to come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out. And the boy was like a corpse. It was like he was dead. He was just laying there so that most of the people around thought he was dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And I I just wanted to read that scripture because again, it's like he knew that this wasn't something normal. He knew as a parent would, somebody has to be able to help my son. I've heard about this man going from town to town. I need to get there and see if what all the commotion about is true. And I love that while he did have a little bit of doubt, he still had enough faith, you know, as small as a mustard seed. And he put that faith to work and he saw that his boy was delivered. So when I asked you that question, how did you know that you needed something, that something was missing or there was more or that you weren't in, in, in an area of your life? Like, what did that look like? And then what were your next steps? Sure. So I think um, that I was struggling at that time. I really wanted to put down, um, you know, a coping mechanism that I had. Um, and that coping mechanism was, um, you know, it was, it was some, it was an, a want and a desire of my flesh. And I also, 
I, I won't go into specific details, but it was just this thing that I was doing um, to cope. And I, I didn't want to do it anymore but mm -hmm. my flesh wouldn't let it go. Or if I was able to let it go on my own strength, it would only go for a very short time and then I would be right back. Yeah. And so because I had tried to put it down, put it down, put it down, put it down, and it just wasn't working. Um, that's when I realized that, um, you know, and, and watching that movie, of course, I, I got to, that's where I was able to put a face to it is the movie helped me put a face to it. Um, and then I had so much hope. I, I remember the next day going to church and just reporting to people. I'm like, I watched this movie and it's like, and I'm going to be delivered. And, and, and I think I thought you're crazy. <laughs> I believe you are correct. Yes. Because I mean, it was such a, a timely message, right? For for someone who was just desperate to mm -hmm. break out of that that bondage um, that I was feeling like held hostage by, yeah, you know, I really felt at that moment that it was not just a, it was a stronghold, yeah. and and I needed to to find I needed to get relief from it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's good that you like you saw it because you were dealing it with you know the way that you knew how as best as you could trying to get over right. it but then you were like um there's more there's got to be yes. something else and you went outside of yourself to look for that help and i know that god honors that you know he honors desperate prayer he honors mm -hmm. humility so he honors the person's heart when they are really um, trying and seeking him. And then he meets you there. And I just, I just love that, um, that genuineness. You have to be authentic with God in vulnerable if you want to receive anything in return. And so even Absolutely. if at first, like you were in, and I don't know, but if you were in maybe denial of what was going on, or um, you maybe thought the idea you know, that you had an issue, but you maybe rejected it right away, or you were doubtful that you could have an issue. Um, Cause I know there's a lot of people in the church who they don't believe in, they don't believe in de deliverance. And if they do believe in deliverance, it's not for them. It's for sure. those, you know, and it's important that we we're talking about this, and I love that there was a movie because God can use anything to get a message to you. And that's the Holy Spirit that prompted you to even watch the movie and draw you in. And so after you, you know, got over, you know, any of the, uh, you know, rejecting the thoughts of um, you didn't have a problem or being in doubt whether or not you felt like you could, um, be delivered because you said that you weren't in doubt anymore. You were filled with hope. And I think that's the biggest message that comes with um, hearing about Jesus. He brings Amen. hope, especially yeah. in the pit. He pulls you out of it. He is the only lifeline that we have. And so the next question I wanted to ask you was, where did you go to get this help? How did you know that um, you could obtain this. Where did, what did that look like for you? Because when we read about this in the scriptures, we read about, um, you know, Jesus teaching in the synagogues and he was, you know, many people thought he was just a regular teacher, one of the rabbis reading scripture. But then when we read the scriptures, we see that he actually taught, um, as one, it says that has authority. They thought it was actually a new teaching they recognized that he was different and he was able to actually deliver people and see results. So how did you know where to go? Where did you start? What does that look like? Like if someone is on here now watching and they're maybe struggling in an area with maybe an um, addiction or different thoughts or um, even something more, um, 
less talked about. Like maybe they feel like they're being influenced by something. Sure. Where would you tell them or how did you start? Where did you look? Okay. At first, I want to circle back to, um, I, I wasn't in denial at first, like, when I, when I saw the movie, I was actually making a list because I was, I was actually realizing there were things that I was blind to just completely blind. Um, because of, of my past experiences, I, um, was rebellious. I was rebellious for so long and, and it was just kind of like my shtick. It was just like in my mind, I was just so rebellious and I didn't even realize until, you know, watching that movie that I was rebellious. Right. And like that I had that attitude or that, that swagger of just rebellion and like how that's not a good thing, you know? Um, and, and so I wanted to say that. And then it wasn't until after the deliverance that I realized how truly blind I was. Um, but we'll, we'll get into that. Right. Um, so where did I go? Um, I actually, I had had you, Danielle, pray for me um, for healing one Sunday after church. And when I went up to you, like I said, I was really naive to any deliverance, like, you know, sort of culture. I was really ignorant to it. I, I had, I, I had never seen anything like it. There were a couple of times, like I had seen maybe a couple of like little things, but nothing like, I had no idea. And I asked you to pray for me. I remember my back was hurting. My legs were hurting. And um, I was going through some chronic health stuff and you, you just laid one finger on me. And I, I just like, I, I was fighting the urge not to fall over. And I, I, I remember like in my head, I'm like, well, maybe there's something to this, just surrender, <laughs> let it go. And I just fell back and it was very startling. Like what transpired thereafter, um, and, and you were calling things out. And this, this is before, you know, I watched the movie, but this coupled with seeing the movie, I was like, I'm going back to Daniel. I'm going back to Daniel. I'm going to the, another woman who operates in the spirit. And, and, and I've seen her, um, I, I'm not sure if I should mention her name or not, but I'm um, just another woman from our church mm -hmm. that that is not shy about, um, you know, proclaiming and acknowledging that Jesus, one third of his ministry was casting out demons. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and, and, and so you and her, and I just felt like, um, you know, you girls would get me set on the, the right path. I, I knew that I wanted hands laid on me. I knew I wanted to be delivered. Um, and then, so that's, I, I kind of, I kind of trusted that God was leading me in the right direction when I went to you um, and this other lady and just kind of laid it all out and, mm -hmm. and said like, you know, I remember bringing my list. I'm like, here's what I need help with. <laughs> oh man. But that's good. Cause he met you there. Jesus met you there. Yeah. Cause it, it's not like anything that I could do or the other lady could do. It's both sides surrendering to Jesus and being vessels that he can use, that he can, um, that his anointing can flow through because it's his anointing that breaks the yokes. And we hear that, that phrase and we're like, what does that mean? But it's the power of God that reaches in and pulls someone out of whatever mess that they're going through. And you can literally feel the power of God setting you free. And how do you know that once um, once that's happened, how do you know that um, anything happened at all? Like, how did you know? What did you feel like? Oh, this is wonderful. So, um, and I, I actually journaled quite a bit thereafter um, because when you go through it, it's so interesting, right? Um, when you go through the actual deliverance, there's a lot of stuff happening in your body and in your mind and in your spirit, mm -hmm. right? And so yep. it's hard to kind of pinpoint what exactly went on, yeah. you know, it, it's, and, and I, I just, I, I feel like you're able to see into that spiritual realm. Yeah. 
um, more so than anything. And then when you come back to the physical realm, you're like, did that really happen? Yeah. And that's what I wrote. I, I looked back. Mm -hmm. I was like, it doesn't even feel real. Um, but I knew it was real um, because the next day I felt completely different. Okay. What does that look like? I felt so empty. I felt, I felt empty. And it was scary at first. I mean, it was, it was, I, I shouldn't say scary because I knew what had happened was, you know, through the blood, through Jesus name. Um, so there's nothing but trust and, and complete trust there, but it was awkward. I felt awkward. I felt awkward because I felt empty. I felt different. Um, like something had been there and whatever it was had left or. Yeah. And I think we, we actually connected because I think you had just done um, a message on, you know, a room. If you, if you picture your spirit or your heart as a room and you put all these things into your room, like I want a chair here. I want a sofa there. And I, I want a doily here. Like you put all these things in the room, right. That you think mm -hmm. are who you are or that you want to identify with, or that you mm -hmm. want to be with and you want to have. Um, but then there comes a point where you can't even move in your room. Right. And that's where I was at spiritually. I, I knew I wanted to level up. It was just, I felt so trapped in this overcrowded room of all these things that I had picked up and thought were mine and thought were for me. And I kind of put them all there. And it was like, yeah, the movers came, moved everything out. I was just sitting in a room yeah. and it's like, how am, how am I going to build my room now? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to let certain things in my room now. And it's almost like take every thought captive and, and test every thought against the word of God, because is this what's meant for me? Is this what, what my purpose is? Is this part of who I'm supposed to be and where I'm yeah. supposed to be at? And so I think that's the best analogy is that I was sitting in an empty room and I had gone from a very crowded, um, messy, chaotic room to just having like such peace, such mm -hmm. peace. Yeah. Um, and I, and I was, I was at peace and I trusted that, that I was feeling like this for a reason, but it was definitely a profound feeling of just emptiness. Um, but in the best possible way, right. And, and that's, that's common too. I, I've, we often hear that. And I think not, I think, but that's why Jesus mentions that in scripture. He mentions this exact thing that you're describing in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. And he says, when an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Waterless places. Then it says, I will return to my house when I will return to the house I left. It's identifying its house as the person that it was previously with. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied swept clean and put in order. Other translations say it fi finds the place empty. Then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. That is how it will be with this wicked generation. But he's talking about there is an emptiness that comes when a person gets delivered of whatever it is that was there that was not the influence of the Holy Spirit. And after that, you can't just leave the person empty. You have to fill up on things. That's right. That's on right. things that have to do with the Lord, right? So how did you fill that space back? Because you didn't just leave it empty. All the things that like you used to do, all the things that you were freed from, you no longer do but what you do to ensure that you did that again or fall into that trap sure. or to fill yourself back up? Sure. So I think um, I, I, you know, removed those temptations from my home that night. Um, and, and when the Bible says that where you were once blind, now you see, that's kind of what happened. And I was really able to discern very clearly what was meant to be in my house and what wasn't. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think, um, staying in, in the word, um, being around godly people, 
um, or like-minded individuals, right? Um, and people that were on the same path, right? Encouraging and supportive. Um, I think, you know, I, I cut out all secular music. I even had a hard time watching television um, because I was just so convicted. Um, anytime I'd watch things that I had seen for or been watching for years, I just didn't feel the same way about it anymore. Um, so I think just an overhaul on some of those like cope, different coping or hobbies, right? Um, mm -hmm. Music and, and media are huge. Um, I did take a break from social media as well. And I, I find that's an, an, a chronic battle. It's like, I'll give it up. I'll pick it up. I'll <laughs> give it up. I'll pick it up. It's um, hard. It is. It is. It, and especially the more, um, you know, we advance in that area, the, the more things are connected to that yeah. area. And yeah. so. Um, and it's not even like we're, we're. Um, saying that social media is bad or watching TV is bad or music right. is bad. We're saying the type of things that you're engaging in or maybe viewing or may come across your screen and you don't even know and or things that you can get kind of like sucked into or, sure. or even like mindless television, like the shows that, you know, come out. It's just like more aware of where you're putting your, your time and your energy. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I, I think like uh, you and this other woman um, from our church, she, she, you, you both really did a great job at, at checking in on me and discipling me, and just kind of um, you know giving me little morsels to go into the Word, find, reflect. Um, and so I will say, um, you know, without that discipleship, I think that I would have felt a lot different, right? Cause you yeah. need people to help guide you through like, cause you're, you're, I mean, I was, I'm not a baby Christian, but in a way when you start to see things for what they truly, truly are, um, I, I do think that, you know, having someone to help you through that is super important. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And I, and I like what you said about, it's not like you were a baby Christian, but it's like, the veils came, the scales came off your eyes yes. after that um, ministry that you received, that deliverance, the healing, um, you were able to see more clearly. It's kind of like Saul who turned to Paul on the road yes. to Damascus. He yes. thought he was going the right way. Life was good. You know, he was doing the right things. You know, he had his own agenda. He thought it was God's agenda, but <laughs> he didn't know that he was doing all the the Christian things. And yeah. then he had an encounter with Jesus <laughs> and turned that whole thing around. But the, the scales fell off of his eyes. He was able to see. And I like how that is something common that we see when we go through deliverance, myself included, you know, with my deliverance experience, is that what you once thought going into it, you find completely inaccurate you were looking at it the wrong way or you couldn't really see what you were actually the harm that you were doing and right. so I, I like that he gives you a new set of eyes and that conviction that you spoke about like when you would um even your environments yeah the holy spirit is there bringing conviction but it's not a bad conviction it's to help you <laughs> it's to keep you safe it's yeah. to guard what has now been given to you, that freedom, right? He says, it's for freedom that you've been set free. Do not go into bondage again. And right. so I love that because he's there with us. And that's, that's he's come alongside of us to help us and guide us. And we just have to be sensitive when he, he's speaking to us, pick up on it and not like just brush it off or say something like, oh, it's just one time. That won't hurt. And then before you know it, you're back yeah. into the same thing. Oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> you're right. And you're right. Um, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you one last question. 
um, do you have like a healing plan or any, did you put into place any accountability? I know you mentioned journaling. Um, I'm sure you pray individually and I know you go to, um, like our prayer meetings at church. Is there anything that you personally like committed to doing yourself to keep yourself kind of in check because we are still human yes. and just because we're a Christian doesn't mean that we don't live, you know, in this world like everyone else and face the same things, but being able to face it and come out um, victoriously, you know, having a godly mindset, yes. mindset and just, you know, living a way that is pleasing to the Lord. How do you ensure that you are doing that the best you can? Sure. Um, so I think that like people at church or, or like-minded individuals, right? Like your, your people are so important because there were times where I was struggling with that temptation to go right back. And if it weren't for the couple people that I were, that I was super transparent with, um, there were times that I didn't even, that I couldn't even pray what I needed to pray to keep myself safe. And when I talked to those friends, they recognized that I needed that prayer. Lord, mm -hmm. meet her where she's at. And they just prayed yeah. over me and, and mm -hmm. they reminded me. And then when we came out of the prayer, I was like, oh, that's what I needed because I couldn't even pray that for myself in that mm -hmm. moment. Um, and so having that iron as iron sharpens iron, having that person speak words of light over me in that situation um, helped, you know, me get away from those thoughts. Right. Because sin starts as a thought. Right. Yeah starts yeah. as a thought. And then we start to make plans and then we get closer and closer back to that place where we don't want to be. Yeah. Um, and so I think that when we have those thoughts, we, we should have someone that we're accountable to. Um, so that way they can pray over us the prayers that we aren't able to pray for ourselves mm -hmm. in that moment, because our flesh is still going to be flesh. Right. Um, and so yeah. I think that, that that's the one thing that stood out to me. Um, and I do church full time. You know, I'm, I'm in a small group. I teach oh. on Sundays. I, I usually am at the prayers and go to these little, you know, extra church things. Right. I wrote mm -hmm. the, um, the play last year, worked with the kids and did the play. And, and that was just such a fulfilling um, experience. Right. Is mentoring someone, their mm -hmm. children. But at the same time, like they teach you just as much as you're yeah. teaching them. Yeah. And, and there were times within that um, play, for example, where we had it all written out. We had been practicing for weeks, but then the Holy Spirit dropped something in me like the day before our our final show. And I'm like, oh, I could have just easily said no. Like, you know, yeah. they, I don't want to tip it. You know, yeah. they quit. I don't want to go in and add some. But the Holy Spirit was like, this is what it's all about. Yeah. And so I, I just was humble and said, listen, guys, I know that this isn't what we've planned on doing, but the Holy Spirit's telling me something. And Miss Jessica has a, an obligation, right? Like yeah. to, to listen yeah. to this and then to tell you guys why we're switching it and, and what that would look like. And so um, that, that was really good for me. Um, just to kind of be in that arena with the kids and to be pouring into them um, because pouring into anybody in that time, because mm -hmm. you never know when it's them helping yeah. you up. And, yeah. and yeah. so it's a beautiful circle. I wanted to ask you um, a question, couple questions as you, I know that was my last question, <laughs> but <That's okay. laughs> so I wanted to ask you a couple things. Um, do you, that it is harder for someone um, when they don't have um, that accountability to stay the course after deliverance. And also, because um, you have to be vulnerable with those people that you're accountable to. And we live in a culture, and it's not just in the world, but it's in the church too, where, you know, my business is my business. And that's between me and God. And, you know, you're not the judge and stuff like that. But what do you, so what do you think about that? 
So I think that's a great question. Um, I, I know for the coping skill that I, or the coping mechanism uh, that I mentioned earlier, uh, that I was really feeling bound by, um, I have found, uh, part of the reason why I'm not mentioning it, mentioning it right now is because I have found that there is some judgment there. Um, and so this person that I was um, confiding in also struggles with that same sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I think that that's uh, whatever it is for you, whatever is most tempting for you, whatever is your, is your, your thing that you struggle with the most. I think it's important to have somebody that can relate to you on it yeah. um, because then they'll know before you do that that was the prayer that needed to be prayed. Right. Cause yeah. she that's prayed true. it. And, and then afterward yeah. I'm like, Oh, that's what I wasn't able to pray myself. Yeah. But she knew, she knew exactly yeah. Yeah. where I was at mentally yeah. um, and with that battle. And so I think that it's someone that can relate to you is, is often the best, right? Um, because, yeah, you know, game, game, recognize game. Like they know, <laughs> like, you know, you're not going to get yeah. by with nothing. You start yeah. avoiding calls. You're like, oh, I know. I know something. Yeah. Yeah. There. yeah. I think the, the other really thing I yeah. The other thing I was going to ask was um, you mentioned like how you're able to hear the Holy Spirit a couple, a couple times you mentioned how you were able to hear him. It sounded almost like more clearly. So I wanted to ask you after, was that something after your deliverance that you noticed that you were able to um, hear him more clearly or more sensitive to the things of the spirit, or maybe you were um, getting up at certain times of the hour, more often to pray or dreams or visions or anything like that. So interesting that you said that because um, the very night that I was delivered, I came home and I was so at peace in my spirit. My body was something else. Like I tossed and turned all night um, and I was up and down. And then for, I would say, a couple of months after my deliverance, I was up always if, and God would wake me up right at that fourth watch. Like it was wild. And, but it's so <laughs> exhilarating at the same time. I mean, yeah. that's how you know that these um, healings, these inner healings, that's how you know they're for real. Um, because even if you like convince yourself like, oh, that wasn't quite what I remember it, or it couldn't have been quite like that. There's that you'll find out. I mean, I didn't sleep and, but I was so joyful. I mean, I, I'm usually a joyful person in general, but like me post deliverance was just like off the chart I'm just <laughs> smiling from ear to ear. I remember that. It was just amazing. That. Yes. It was awesome. It was awesome. Um, and I, I wouldn't, I did, I didn't sleep. My husband said that that night that my feet were like, you know, he was like, I, I felt like you were running in the bed. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was wild. And so, yes, I would get up and pray. And, um, you know, after a couple of months, I, I want to say it was a couple of months of just getting up and I would hit the floor and pray and yeah. pray. And then I would fall back to sleep. I feel bad that I went back to sleep. I'm like, no, no, no I, I got up and I prayed. Um, but there, you would be so sleepy. But it's just, um, that's just, you just feel so loved that yeah. God would wake you up. Yeah. Some special alone time with you. Yeah. Um, and so it was just marvelous. It was yeah. an amazing. Because that's, that's what it is. It's it's his invitation. I, um, you know, talking to different people and hearing them um, over time with their deliverance stories. And they, a thing is after that deliverance, that healing, they are more able to hear him more clearly. They're more aware or sensitive in the spirit. They often wake up at a certain time of the night and it's day after day after day. And that's how, you know, it's not your biological clock or whatever. It's not um, something you ate. It's not coincidence. Right. It's the Lord waking you up. And you mentioned the fourth watch, which is something else that's usually pretty common. 
that watch in um, biblical times, the Hebrew um, day is broken up into watches. So three hour increments of the day and their day begins at sundown. So the fourth watch puts us in that three to 6 a.m. hour. And when we read the scriptures, um, there were lots of people getting up at that time. That was when he called Peter out to walk on the water. So he was inviting him to step out, to come deeper. And he was releasing revelation and he had to step out in faith and trust. It's, it's a lot about trusting God and having faith and coming out into deeper things with him. And he also did the same thing with David and um, Isaiah. And I believe when David was getting up, because he talks about how he was up in the watches. And I believe when he was up, because when we look at that word, it says that um, he was musing over him. So he was talking to him and the Lord was speaking to him. And I think he was writing music too, <laughs> because it. the Psalms. Yeah. And so I'm so it's like revelation and he's he's inviting you to get up. And Isaiah says he was not rebellious. He did not turn backward. He didn't put the covers back over him. Not until he prayed, <laughs> not until he got up and, and spoke with the Lord. And I just love that because, you know, we're human. We would think, oh, that's just us. Turn back over and go to sleep. Why do I keep waking up at the same time every night? But that's the Lord again and again. The Holy Spirit's nudging you, asking you, will you come with me? Will you spend time with me? And the more you do that, you get more sensitive to him yes. and he just speaks to you in, in more ways. And so I just love that. It's just a, a good time of intimacy. It reminds me of when you have a new baby and you they're sleeping, but you just want to be close to them. You just want to hold yeah. them and like, you know, just start like <laughs> it, 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 yeah. it, it's such a beautiful um, experience. It's such a beautiful experience. Um so, yeah, I, I remember um, also just feeling like things that I had always done. I just looked at so much differently. Um, and so I, I, I think that the clarity um, post-deliverance was refreshing. I mean, there were passages that in the Bible that I had read and knew and can recite, but then with that clarity, you see it completely different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. After the deliverance, we read the Bible, you and I, and it was like, it, you could tell immediately, like I had taken off the sunglasses. Like you could still see things, right? Yeah. But it yeah. was so much clearer. And you yeah. really understood the truth and the the genuineness of it. Hmm. That's so good. <laughs> it is. Praise well, God. Jessica, we've been on here for like 45 minutes. I, I was able to finally get you on here. So thanks for Yay. being patient with me. I'm glad I got to talk to you. And, and on here, you were able to share your story. So thank you again. And Ooh, thank um, you anything that you would like to say to close out or no I just think that it's wonderful that you're getting started in this journey for yourself like I think that you have such a beautiful heart and such a wonderful passion for Jesus and all things related to the spirit and so I just think that this is a wonderful thing for you to to do to set out on and I'm very proud of you well, and I can't you. wait to see what more it brings. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Yes, thank you. So I'm going to pray us out before we close. Father God, I thank you for um, just the time that we had in fellowship together, you and I and Jessica. And I thank you for everyone who was able to come on the live and even all those who are watched the replay. I thank you for just everything that you've done in each of our lives and everything that you're going to continue to do. I ask that those who would watch this message and even the ones that have watched it, that you will continue to speak to them, continue to um, nudge them and just reveal truth to them as only you can. I ask that you would meet them exactly where they are, meet every need and that you would just um, Give them that confidence and that courage to seek you, seek you boldly with their whole heart 
and um, to not not give up until they they reach you, um, because you are ever ready to meet them. And so I just pray over us that we would um, just continue to grow in deeper relationship with you and that we would live the lives that you have called us to live, bringing glory and honor to you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. I'll see you next time, Jess. Bye. 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 Bye.